Yes, so this is the lecture number 44 on uh, drainage system design. So, as I said in this we will be uh, talking about the drainage principles and some of the equations will be using uh, in designing of drainage. Okay, so, so, the mostly the ground water flow if you see, so the ground water flow is very slow first of all. So, it takes 10 to 12 uh, meter per day and if you go even deeper and deeper it takes years. Okay. So, the mostly, um, so since, so this is entirely different kind of flow compared to the open channel flow because open channel flow is the the, the complete fluid without having any inter, you know interfere with the soil particles uh, that means it is not a porous you know uh, flow right or flow through porous media. So, flow through porous media is uh, very slow and then uh, basically this Laplace equation uh, is the, the basic principle used for you know ground water flow. So, let us see how this has been derived. So, this is the combination of both Darcy's equation and mass continuity equation. We will know uh, Darcy's equation which is written as q is equal to uh, velocity v into i. Okay. So, i is the hydraulic uh, gradient uh, which can be written as k hydraulic conductivity into i that is gradient and then the k into d h by d s is the hydraulic gradient okay. and k is the hydraulic conductivity i is hydraulic gradient and d h is the head difference with the distance d s. Okay. So, this is same thing uh, if you have a saturated soil column which has you know the pressure difference like this is the pressure difference d h and then you have the d l length okay. or here if it is d s length and q this is the flow which is taking place. So, the q which is equal to and the k is the hydraulic conductivity of the media. So, the q which is equal to k into d h by d s. Okay. So, this is, is what we get this equation and then for three dimensional system the same equation can be uh, written as v x uh, which is equal to k into d h by d x x direction and y direction and z direction. So, just like this. So, he this one, this one, this one. Okay, this is v x, v y and v z. So, in three dimensional uh, case, so the flow which is taking place in x direction is k into d h by d x. Uh, this also says it is a flux. So, v y which is k into d h by d y and v z k into d h by d z. For steady state condition that means, no change in storage. So, mass continuity equation can be written as d v x by d x plus d v y by d y plus d v z by d z in three dimensional uh, case because the storage is I mean change in storage is 0 in steady state. So, this can be written I mean the mass conservation can be written in this way. So, combining these two uh, you get uh, so like k x into d square h by d x square plus k y into d square h by d y square plus k z into d square h by d z square. Because we know v x is equal to k into d h by d let us say x. Okay. This is 1 and in mass conservation equation d v x by d x. So, that will be d by d x into k into d h by d x. So, that will be k into d square h by d x square. So, this is in x direction. Okay. So, similarly for y direction for the z direction you get. Okay. And for homogeneous uh, and isotropic soils, so k x, k y, k z are equal. So, that k term can be eliminated from the previous equation. So, finally, this is the Laplace equation for the ground water flow under steady state conditions. Okay. So, here is an ex example uh, a 1.2 meter uh, deep soil column consists of three layers. Okay. One is having 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 meter depth of layers. So, the horizontal hydraulic conductivity of the layers are 0 0.2, 1, 
0.15, 0.25 meter cube per meter square per hour respectively. So, determine the resultant hydraulic conductivity of the soil column. So, you have uh, a soil columns like uh, horizontal columns. So, which has 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 meter. So, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3 meter depths of layers and this has 0 0.2 and 0 0.15, 0 0.25. So, this is hydraulic conductivities and this is the layers. Okay. If this is the case, so what would be your total, I mean the average hydraulic conductivity for the whole soil system. So, for uh, horizontal hydraulic conductivity K H this is average, this is called uh, uh, depth averaged uh, hydraulic conductivity. Okay. So, the K, K i into D i by sigma D i. So, simply just you know put the values 0 0.2 into 0 0.5 right and 0 0.15 into 0 0.4, 0 0.25 into 0 0.3 divided by the total is 1.2 and kh is 0 0.235 meter cube per meter square per hour. So, if this is this is a horizontal. So, k v that is a vertical this is also uh, so that will be uh, so that will be d divided by uh, d by k okay so d i by k i so this will be d divided by d i by k i so this is a vertical hydraulic conductivity if you have so other things all right so next is the groundwater flow to drain so we have uh, known the steady state you know groundwater flow using laplace equation and this is the steady state problem. So, you need to assume certain things uh, while, as, while uh, estimating the uh, water flow or the dis dis or drainage to the drain pipe. Okay, here, if you see this, this is the ground surface and from the ground surface, let us assume the Q is accretion rate, right. So, which is uh, accumulating, I mean the, the flow is taking place into the ground and these are the drains, drain 1 and uh, drain pipe 2 okay. and which is, so after some time it is making an equilibrium uh, with the, the flow system. So, then we have to as assume some of the things uh, like the steady state problem that means the Q recharge, this is kind of a recharge. So, which will be equal to the drain discharge drain discharge. So, then only this will be a steady state the problem. Then the flow lines are parallel. So, look at this here the flow lines which are uh, going parallel to the drains right. So, these two uh, assumptions are very much important uh, for steady state problem. So, here okay. So, then the next is Next is horizontal flow based solutions. So, there are assumption if you see here this is the actual in actual condition uh, for example, this is going to the drain somewhere here. Okay. So, the phreatic surface this is water table surface right water table surface the pressure at this point is atmospheric of course and then if you see here the, the these are these are the flow lines okay. these are the flow lines and then so, e, in, in case of horizontal flow based condition, so Jupiter Frenchmeyer assumptions need to be considered. So, the flow lines are horizontal. So, here, so we consider these flow lines are horizontal, right, and then equipotential lines are vertical. So, then, then uh, this, this is the I mean the dh, so the vertical equipotential lines, and the flow velocity in the plane at all depths is proportional to the slope of the water table. Uh, only and independent of the depth of the flow system. So, here the flow which is taking place is uh, depends on the, the uh, d h by d x. So, which is the slope of the velocity which is taking place or the flow which is taking place depends on the slope of the uh, I, mean, I mean the, the drawdown curve you can say here. Okay. And the next is design of surface again system, uh, the surface drainage, surface drainage is mostly 
uh, you know planned based on the uh, rational method okay so this uh, this is uh, basically to use to estimate the design uh, surface runoff so the rational method uh, which has the relationship q is equal c i a okay so where uh, q is runoff rate meter cube per hour and a is the area from where runoff generates okay so this is the area and here here you are measuring it so that's q is equal to c i a this is the area of the particular you know uh, piece of land from where water is uh, draining or running off uh, for a particular uh, storm event. Okay. So, I is the peak rainfall intensity and C is the runoff coefficient usually taken from 0.5 to 0.7. The I basically um, can be taken from long term like 20 to 50 years peak rainfall. Okay. So, this with this you will be knowing how much or what is the maximum or runoff this particular land surface can result. Okay. So, based on that you will be planning for the, the carrying capacity of the uh, surface drain. So, that is the main uh, intention and the second is design considerations and layout surface drainage system. So, the first thing is uh, drain layout should be based on topography, okay. shape of the form and catchment and direction of the natural slope uh, which way the slope is uh, leading to and position of the form buildings and roads. So, these are very important your drain uh, I mean the trench or surface drain, uh, trench should not uh, cross right these uh, buildings or roads okay. and uh, position existence of natural depressions channels or rivers. So, this is another important thing this should be I mean the drain uh, base uh, should be you know a little bit higher than the the other uh, river or depressions so 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 that uh, this can go into the depression right or or the river okay and the drain layout should be done with consideration of minimum length of run and minimum uh, crossing of the road so this is you have to design the drains in such a way that the length uh, needs to be you know the optimum so that the construction cost will be reduced and minimize the wastes of land and minimize the cost of uh, culverts and land grading serves the purpose of the surface so land grading is very important in case of surface uh, drainage construction so since uh, the lands are not you know level then uh, the the, com the the drainage system doesn't work properly so, here an example how the uh, surface drain is being you know constructed here. So, you have office building here initially it is there and form implement shed right and there is a weather station ok and, uh, and if the, this, this is the thing available it is already there in the particular you know uh, piece of land you want to make uh, in this you, you want to construct a surface drain for this. So, uh, considering these three places, so you need to uh, also look at the slope. Okay. So, look at the here the, this is the main drain right which is taking place. So, this, this, is, this is kind of a collector and this is the field drain right. So, and this is the field drain. So, look at this. So, this is not crossing the office building or even this field drain is not crossing the weather station. Okay. And then these are the feeder drains of course, the field drain, feeder drains are same and this is also feeder drain and here sometimes what happened the secondary drain and the tertiary drain. So, the tertiary drain uh, um, I mean drains to the secondary drain and secondary drains drains to the main drain. Okay. So, these are all feeder drains. So, this way we need to chalk out the drainage plan, system plan. Uh, without crossing the office building and form implements or weather stations. Okay. So, then the next is hydraulic design of surface uh, drain. So, so, hydraulic design of surface drain it is similar to the design of an open irrigation channel in case of open irrigation channel. So, we will be looking into the uh, peak uh, runoff taking place from the particular area and then design the uh, dimensions 
right. Similarly, here the capacity should be based on the design peak surface runoff from the drainage area using rational formula you will be knowing what is Q like Q peak and the concrete channel both rectangular and trapezoidal types can be easily constructed. Okay. So, for concrete channels you can also go ahead with the rectangular or trapezoidal whereas, earthen channels uh, safety or, or the stability is concerned. So, or waterways. So, you will be uh, using the trapezoidal type of channels. Okay, here is an example the surface drainage uh, should be planned for a new agricultural farm uh, to drain out irrigation tail water and seasonal uh, rainfall runoff. The maximum rainfall intensity at the site in 20 years record is 35 mm per hour. The tertiary drain would have to carry runoff from 4 hectare land. The secondary drain would have to carry thrice of the tertiary and the main drain to carry discharge of four secondary drain of similar flow. Okay. And determine the design discharge capacity of the tertiary, secondary and main drain. Okay. So, there is an area of the land you need to design a surface irrigation system uh, sorry surface drainage system. So, it consists of tertiary, secondary and main drains. Okay. So, uh, given the 20 years record period 35 mm per hour. So, and, and, and also the proportion of the carrying capacity of different channels. So, now estimate the carrying capacity of tertiary, secondary and main drains. Okay. So, this is the example let us see the main thing here we will be using the Q is equal to C i a. So, this is a rational formula here area is given 4 hectares. So, convert into meter square. Okay. So, the next is um, and then the next is i. Uh, 35 mm per hour. So, that is in meter per second and the C is 0.6 for agricultural land and putting all the values uh, for the tertiary drain. So, Q T for tertiary drain 0 0.6 9 0.72 into 10 power minus 6. So, so tertiary drain a carries 0 0.6 times of that particular area. Okay and this will give 0 0.233 meter cube per second. So, the discharge cap of secondary drain. So, that is 3 times the tertiary drain. So, you get this and main drain. So, which is 4 times the secondary drain and you get 2.8 meter cube per second. Okay. So, this is the way this problem can be solved. So, the next is the design of pipe drainage systems. So, mostly we will be talking about subsurface drainage system that is a, a trail drainage system. So, in this system basically the variables we will be focusing on uh, the discharge capacity Q. Okay. So, this is the discharge capacity let us say Q and water table depth to be maintained in the field relative to soil surface. So, what this is the H we will be maintaining because this is where we will be uh, uh, we are looking for our root zone basically. Okay. So, this is H. So, uh, this is H and the Q we need to consider and then field drain is base width. So, the field drain is base width W and the spacing of the land L. So, these are the main parameters we will be considering in pipe drainage system. Okay. And then here uh, for the steady state formula. Uh, steady constant flow occurs through the soil to the drain and discharge equals to recharge okay, and H is constant. So, as I said after equilibrium, so whatever the uh, Q which is taking place, so that will be equal to the drain discharge. So, that the H is constant here and this is the steady state. Okay. And then unsteady state formula, the all other parameters vary. So, the Q may not be same as this Q okay, and H is not constant. So, that will vary. Okay. And then drain spacing, the drain spacing formula it has the input. So, you should know the Q right H and W from H and W you can estimate H. So, you know uh, H minus uh, W sorry W minus H 
uh, w is the base width. So, w minus h will be h. Okay, so, that uh, h will be known and q and h from q and h uh, knowing the drain type and soil parameters you can estimate uh, you can use the drain spacing formula and then estimate L that is a drain space. So, this is the uh, simple way to remember uh, how to estimate drain spacing by knowing the q, h and w okay, and also drain spacing formula and other parameters. Okay. So, here uh, so, as I mentioned previously there is a real case and schematized case in case of your tail drain. So, in the real case, so this is W is uh, the base width and D is uh, depth to your uh, base from the impervious stratum. Okay. So, and if you see here the flow lines which are going vertical then after that this is going radial, okay. going vertical and radial, vertical and radial, but in case of uh, schematized okay so because it's a difficult to you know formulate in this way so in case of uh, formulations it is easier to is a vertical and then horizontal then the radial okay vertical horizontal radial so the flow is taking place in three you know modes so one is vertical horizontal and radial place okay so the mostly here uh, for radial flow, for radial flow, the diameter is 0.7 d. Okay, so this is the the flow. Let's say radial flow of influence, and um, and also which will be uh, I mean I mean the horizontal flow will be taking place about l by 4, right? At a depth of l by 4. Okay, so here the horizontal flow will be taking place L by 4. Okay. So, that is the uh, from drain base to uh, L by 4 below the horizontal flow is will be taking place. So, these are the assumptions we are we need to make uh, to schematize or to model the drain spacing or, or to model the drain or to find out the drain spacing formula. Okay. So, the flow patterns if you just go back and uh, refer. So, here the streamlines towards parallel pipe drain typically shown as a pattern. So, we have seen previously. So, if you see, so this is a drain. Okay. So, first it is going vertically down and then horizontal and then radial. So, this shows a particular pattern. In saturated zone below the water table, the water continues more or less a vertical downward. Okay, this is what we see, and direction, but soon turns into lateral flow towards the drain. Okay, towards end of its path, the flow converges radially, so laterally and then radially. Okay, so here, the relative magnitude of H and D and L determines the type of flow. Okay, this is very important. So, the basically the flow type of flow is the vertical, lateral or radial that will be uh, uh, that will be determined by knowing the h small h and capital D and L. So, when L it is very very larger than h and D right h and D then this is predominantly horizontal flow. When the spacing which is equal to the the distance between the you know the drain base and the impervious layer then an extensive radial flow. So, when L is very very less than H right H is the head at the middle of two drains. So, that is a distinct vertical flow. Okay. So, that means the H is very very high uh, than the uh, spacing then it is a vertical flow. So, the horizontal depth may extend to depth uh, down to L by 4 uh, below the drain base we have seen previously. The radial uh, flow zone is roughly conformed to circle with a radius 0 0.7 d that also we have seen the previously and total head loss will be the total head loss H uh, like in, in a drain the total head loss suppose this one and this is the root zone and this is at H and this is small h okay, 
and this is capital W and then impervious layer. So, that is at uh, D. Okay. So, here at any point H at any point H which is uh, which is equal to H V head due to vertical, head due to horizontal, head due to radial and head due to entrance, entrance losses because the water when you flowing here this is the envelope material right. So, uh, I mean the head definitely influence the, uh, the head loss due to entrance. So, with this theory let us uh, find out the different heads right vertical, horizontal, radial and and then uh, entrance. So, then that comprises the total head. Okay. So, if you see here this is the whole schematic. So, let us say this is uh, uh, one drain right and there is a another drain somewhere outside this you know uh, slide but uh, see here this is the middle point right this is the middle of the drain and let us say uh, the distance between these two right L by 2 this is L by 2 and then there are 3 piezometers installed this is the piezometer 1, piezometer 2 and piezometer 3. So, these 3 piezometers are installed in such a way that that captures both vertical horizontal and radial flows. For example, here so piezometer 1 is installed exactly half of the distance. Okay. So, that means this is the maximum H uh, where you can see this. So, nearer to that there is another piezometer which is installed right. So, that captures uh, I, I mean here if you see the difference between the head difference between 1 and 2 will give H V. So, that is um, the head due to vertical flow and let us if, if the d V is the, the distance or d V is uh, let us say the maximum H here. Okay. I mean through which uh, the vertical flow will be taking place for example. Okay. So, vertical flow is taking place like this. So, take this is the d v okay, and here uh, let us say piezometer 1 and there is another piezometer 2 here. So, the head difference delta h delta h will be here okay, and d v this is saturated medium. So, the vertical flow which is taking place from this column will be uh, estimated using Darcy's law. Okay. So, the Darcy's equation so this will give the uh, Darcy's equation H V is equal to Q which is taking place that is a Q right the same thing same here and then Q into D V into K that is H V. So, in other ways Q is equal to K into H V uh, by D V. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, Darcy's law and you can write down H V as Q D V by K V. So, that is where the vertical uh, head will be estimated. So, the same thing can be uh, observed by difference but taking the difference of water levels in 1 and 2 that is vertical. Okay. So, and similarly there is another uh, piezometer installed at a distance of 0 0.7 d right 0 0.7 d. So, that will capture the, the radius uh, I mean I mean the head due to head due to radial flow. Okay. So, now let us this is the vertical flow you can estimate using Darcy's equation. Similarly, there is a horizontal flow horizontal flow which can be estimated. So, this is a uh, little if, if you see here the horizontal flow is taking place from uh, 3 to 2. Okay. So, between 3 and 2. So, uh, so let us say from this point this is going in x direction and this is going in y direction x and y is h. Okay. So, x uh, and from this point x towards this direction and h in the upper side this is h and x. Okay. So, then uh, this is a linear interpolation. 
So, the q h that is the horizontal flow which is taking place. So, that will be is, is equal to q into l h by 2 minus x. So, l h by 2 is the distance between the uh, 1 and 2 ok 1 and 2. So, that is q into l h by 2 minus x and from uh, Darcy's law you can also estimate k, k into d h d h by d x because this is the layer thickness and through which uh, the horizontal flow is taking place and hydraulic conductivity and d h ok uh, and d h by d x ok. So, d h uh, into let us say unit uh, width unit width. So, that will be so basically this is a, a cross sectional area when there is a unit unit width and d h is the unit thickness ok. So, d h uh, can be written as d plus 0.5 h. So, the d h it is identified as the d here plus 0.5 of d uh, 0.5 of h ok. So, and, and also you have uh, equating these two expressions for solving the result differential equation for x is equal to 0 h x equal to 0 x equal to l h by 2 h x equal to h s. So, here so as I said this is x and this is h. So, when x is equal to 0 h is equal to 0 when x is equal to l h by 2 at the extreme point right and h s equal to h s. So, this is h s ok. So, with this boundary conditions and then equating this integrating this you get the solution as. So, first of all equating this and then these are the uh, limits and uh, uh, L uh, 0 and L h by 2 L h by 2 minus x d x k into d h by d x and finally, if you integrate it you get h h the horizontal head head due to horizontal flow is equal to q L h square divided by 8 k into d h ok. And the radial flow for the radial flow there is a ends 1962 he has uh, suggested the equation. So, h r is equal to q into L by pi k into L n of a d r by uh, mu. So, where a d r is uh, indicative geometric parameter which varies with the location of the drain relative to impermeable stratum ok. And then u represents the wet entry permeometer of the drain. So, here for example, if it is uh, circular, so u is equal to pi r naught because circular the, the only wetted is half right. So, pi r naught and uh, in case of trench, so u is uh, the rectangular and uh, in case of rec, uh, trapezoidal, the u is the trapezoid uh, perimeter this is basically the perimeters ok. And then uh, yeah, so the next is uh, uh, entry flow H e for entry flow basically. So, H e uh, we need to minimize for H e needs to be 0 k envelope greater than 10 times the k soil. So, hydraulic conductivity of the envelope material should be greater than 10 times of the soil hydraulic conductivity. So, here in you can also measure the entry flow by installing a piezometer nearer to the uh, piezometer which is directly connected to the well. So, for example, the piezometer is installed uh, into the drain and there is a second piezometer which is installed at 10 to 20 centimeter nearer to the uh, drain uh, which has the envelope material ok. So, here the drain H e so that will be so like this ok. So, this is H e we need to uh, find out or minimize ok. So, so if you install a, a piezometer nearer to 10 to 20 centimeter nearer to the uh, drain the water level which is present right uh, the difference in two water levels will give the H e ok. So, that that way we can estimate H e or uh, H e uh, I mean you can also minimize H e by uh, I mean 
by uh, knowing the hydroconductivity of the soil and the estimating the k envelope by multiplying with the 10. Okay, so, this is all about this lecture in which uh, we will be uh, talking about the, the drainage, the flow, okay, hydraulics. So, the basically in the real sense, so the fluid, uh, I mean the drainage which is taking place from the top to drain uh, pipe will be uh, leading to the vertical and then all of a sudden it goes to the radial and uh, whereas, in the schematic leave in order to make the uh, flow you know simulations easier. So, uh, what we do? So, first vertical flow and then the lateral flow and then uh, radial flow. So, these three flows uh, will be uh, considering in drainage. So, the other thing is uh, so, so, the drainage uh, head which is taking place in between two drain points can be considered uh, by summing up the you know vertical head, horizontal head, uh, radial head and entry head. Okay. So, combining all these three heads you will get the total head. Okay. So, mostly in order to find out these heads we will be using Darcy's equation and, uh, and also linear interpolation in case of horizontal uh, head and in case of uh, radial ends equation. Uh, whereas, in case of entry uh, losses, so you will be uh, you know using the you you you, you will be installing a you know piezometer near to 10 to 20 centimeter nearer to the main drain ok and then and the head law head difference or the water level difference in both drains you will both piezometers will give the H g ok. Thank you so much.